A good Nerev Shabbos, everyone. As we get ready for this uh, Shabbos Chazak, Shabbos Matas Masoy, Shabbos Mavorchin, and uh, this special segment called For the Shabbos Table, where we will zoom in on Parshas Masai, since the main Chumashir was on Matas, is made possible by a grant from the Stern family, and we hope that Hashem shows them favor and gives them all their heart's desire. I'd also like to learn for Vigda Arye ben Rivka. He should have a refu shalayim of b'seich shachal Yisrael. So Elam Asay b'nei Yisrael, these are the travels of the b'nei Yisrael. And we know there are 42 Masois. And uh, it's interesting that the Sefer Azi Koran writes that in all of the 42 travels, there is no letter Zion. So first he says this points to the fact that they didn't travel on Shabbos, the seventh day. That's why there's no letter Zion. Isn't that interesting? But then he says something else. He says that through all these travels, they didn't need clay Zion. They didn't need weapons. Now, they did have weapons, because it says, They came down, Rashi says, They came down armed, which we, they would use later in the battle of Sichon and Oig. But as they were protected by the Anonia covet, they didn't need any weaponry. Uh, the, uh, it's interesting that he, he then goes on to say, actually it's a Pardis Yosef, that says in the bracha of Yaakov to Yehuda, it has all the letters of the Aleph base except for the Zion. Because the Malcha Yehuda, Malcha's base David, did not rely on weapons. You know, <laughs> most kings, they have the royal guard and the royal army, but David HaMelech, he put his trust. What was the Mugain David? What was the six-sided star of David? The Mugain David was Echad of Echad Lamatav Hashem, who was above, below, in the four directions. And like we say from the Tehillim of David, Elav Arechev, Elav Asusim. These Goyim put their faith in chariots and these in horses. We put our trust in Hashem. Right, so therefore there's no Zion. There's no Zion in Yehuda because they didn't rely on clay Zion, on weapons. And then I thought to myself, you know why a weapon is called clay Zion? Because Zion is seven. That's Teva. Clay Zion, you know, Uzi's, you know, and 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 uh, Berettas and uh, all the long-range uh, sniper with silencers. That's all Teva. That's Zion. We're above Teva, but that's why Clay Zion is probably called Zion because that's the letter of Teva. Elam Asai B'nai Yisrael. These are the travels of the B'nai Yisrael. So Rabbeinu Bachya asks, why do we need to know these travels? By name, 42 stops. What, what's, what's the purpose of it? And he talks about a very fundamental idea. He says, not all the steps were the same. He says, Kol Maseyem, all of their travels, Toli Kefi Machshavtem La Kaddish Baruch, depended on their attitude with Hashem. And when their thoughts were with Hashem and their trust was with Hashem, then they had Midas Arachamim and things went well. And the name of the place pointed to that. Harshafer, the beautiful mountain, Miska, sweet, sweetness. However, when their thoughts veered away from Hashem, 
Then there was Midas Adin. And then there was Vayachanu Becharoda, in a place of fear. Bedovka, where they got pushed. Vayachanu Bemara, where there's bitterness. When Chayim with Betochen brings Bracha, blessing, Menucha, rest, Megan, shielding, Kamoshinema, like it says, Ashrei Kol Choisevoi. Fortunate are all those that put their trust in him. And we all know what we say in benching. Baruch HaGever Asher Yiftach Ba'ashem. Blessed is a person who puts his trust in Hashem. Vaya Hashem Miftachai. And what else do we say in benching? Vidor Hashem, those that constantly seek Hashem. Lo Yach Siru Kol Don't lack anything. Now, I want to analyze this a little bit. The Torah says, Loisira mehem. Don't be afraid of them. Now, simply, this love refers to soldiers. That they're not supposed to be afraid when they go to battle. And that's the way the Rambam, the Chinuch, learns this love. However, Rabbeinu Yaina broadens its scope. Rabbeinu Yaina says, Loisira mehem means a person shouldn't be afraid of life circumstances. Leisira mehem. It's an injunction that a person should put their trust in Hashem. Now, of course, this begs the question. Because the person says, well, you know, I, I know Hashem won't do something bad unless I deserve it. But even Yaakov Avinu was worried. Vayira Yaakov, Shema Yigray Machet lest maybe sin will cause him to uh, get hurt. So how can a person have a token that things will be alright and put their trust in Hashem when maybe he's not deserving that things should go right? This is a, a basic question on betochen. So let me tell you what the Leshem says. The Leshem, the famous Zayda of Rebel Yashiv, the Le Leshem says that even a Russia can exercise Betochen. Because it's an automatic thing that Habiteach Bashem, if a person puts their trust in Hashem, Chesed Yisei kindness will surround them. And he coins a phrase. You know, we all heard of the mimer of Rab Nachman Mebres of Ein Dover Oimid Bifnei Nothing stands in the way of a, of a strong will. Right? Meder Shadam writes of Lelechas Melichan, I say. The Leshem says, Ein Dover Oimid Bifnei Abitachin. Nothing stands in the way of Bitachin. That's the power of Bitachin. And it's interesting, Rabbi Khan of Asimin, one gets a thrill to say something. We know that he went back from America to his death to stand with his people. And he went to the gas chambers giving people chizik. We get a chance to sifzais of Dovavais Bekeva, this holy man. He, he should be a Melis Yosha for all of us. Rav Elchanan Vasman says, that if sin will stop us from putting our trust in Hashem, then how could anybody have sit, trust in Hashem? There's nobody that's righteous that didn't sin. Elamai, the koyach of betochen, the proper trust in Hashem, gives a koyach that a person should have good according to his trust. Like we say, Yehi chastacha Hashem aleinu, let your kindness be upon us, kasher yichal nulach, in direct proportion to how much we hope towards you. And that we realize that when we put our trust in you, then things will be good. Of course, we shouldn't be tested. You know, it says that we learned in Pirkei Avos that one of the best things is a good neighbor. 
Baruch Hashem, I was Zaycha the last few summers that we have a, 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 a summer cottage in uh, Elmshade Estates, and I was Zaycha to live right next to Krula. So I dive in every morning and every evening when I'm up in the mountains, I'm broadcasting now from back in Lakewood, but when I have the pleasure of being up in South Fallsburg, I dive in, in the morning and late Marav with the Krula Rebbe. And I get to hear pearls of wisdom from him. So this week he told me that it was the Yodzeit of Rabbi Shlomo Karlina. And he told me that Rabbi Shlomo Karlina was so holy that the Kedushas Levi, Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Mabedicheva said that Rabbi Shlomo Karlina was regularly visited by Elio Anavi. So someone once asked Rabbi Shlomo Karlina from what he makes a parnasa, from what he makes a living. So he told him tongue in cheek, two cows. So the person was a little bit perplexed. First of all, Rabbi Shlomo Karlina did not sell milk for a living. He didn't have two cows. So what did he mean, two cows? In Yiddish, a cow is called a key. Key. And what he meant is, is he makes a living from the two keys. Kivo yismach libeinu. In him our heart rejoices. Kivashem kachay batachnu. In his holy name we put our trust. He lives on Betachet. So, that's a high madrega. That person rejoices. He has no worries. He's rejoicing because he has trust in Hashem. So the Heliga Leshekovitz was from the Talmidi of, Talmidim of Kabrin said, that's a high level. But there's another two keys. So Zelikovitz. There's, an, there's another two keys. Your kindness never ends. For your mercy doesn't cease. It's easier to have in mind those two keys. So I was thinking about the two keys. And this morning, before I came back to Lakewood, I down with the Rebbe, and I said, I thought about another two keys. Thank Hashem for He is good, for His kindness is forever. So the Rebbe smiled and said, I was mechavan to the Talmud of Baal Shem Tov. So these are the keys. These are the keys to success. Right? Your kindness, kiloi samlu, it doesn't end. Kiloi chalu rachamav. Hoidu l'Hashem ki toiv. Kiloi lam chastai. A life of trust in the Rabbi Nishalayim is a training. The person says, you know what? The Rabbi Nishalayim is going to help me. Rabbi Nishalayim loves me and he's going to help me. And a person, of course, I, I'm saying this myself, I have to work on it. All of us have to work on it. But maybe we'll work first on the other keys. Realizing how good Hashem is to us. The kindness of Hashem, it doesn't cease. All the good things that we have. It's very interesting. I, you hear from me all the time from the Sefer Oyel Aryeh. That's Rav, Rav Label Katz's Sefer on Chumash. With sadness, I learned the last parsha that's Masai in the Oyel Aryeh because unfortunately there's no Oyel Aryeh in Dvarim. Rav Label Katz was taken away from us during COVID to our great loss the very last piece of the Sefer, it says, V'im yotza yotza haroitzeach es gvul irmeklotai. If the person that killed 
Bishogeg unwittingly leaves the protection of the Ari Miklat, the city of refuge. Then, Virotzach Goyal Adam Esreitzeach, if an avenging relative kills him, Ein Dam, then the killer is not guilty because he wasn't supposed to venture out of the protective custody of the city. The Rambam says a remarkable thing. The Rambam in the seventh parak of Hilchus Reitzayach says that the man who was in exile because he killed somebody Bishoigeg cannot leave the protective cloak of the Arya Miklat even if he knows testimony about a condemned man to save his life. Let's say somebody is being accused that he killed someone. And he knows uh, testimony to save his life. He cannot come out into the court because if he leaves, the girl Adam could kill him. So Rabbi Yaakov says, but it's pikuach nefesh, to save another yid. And Rabbi Yaakov says, yes, but he's not allowed to, to put his own life in danger. The girl Adam is allowed to kill him. Isn't that how far it extends. Uh, this is what Rabbi Levo Katz ends the Sefer with. I just wanted to point out that I believe, though, that the Sanhedrin, the small <coughs> superior court, of 23, in order to do Dine Nefashis, you need a, a small circuit Supreme Court of 23 judges. It's interesting, the Chazaynish said that to throw a child out of yeshiva, you really need a Besden of 23, because it's a matter of life and death. I would imagine that the Sanhedrin cotton should have to go to the Orimikla, because they have a command of a Tzilu Ha'eda, that they, they have to try to save the condemned man. And if they know that somebody has witness, has a testimony, and he can't come to them, they have to go to him to, to be to be Mekayim the mitzvah of Etzilu Ha'eda. This Shabbos, I have a chiv to Lein Naftaira and Davin Musaf. And if there's no chiv to daven for the Yom Matzah Shabbos, the reason why we daven the Matzah Shabbos before the yard site is because Matzah Shabbos is the yard site of the Neshama Yaseira. For next week is the yard site of my uh, beloved father, Rabbi Aaron Tzvi ben Rameir, Heshi Weiss, his neshama should have a great aliyah. My father, Allah Vashalom, is proof that a person can bounce back from tremendous hardship. On the first day of Shavuos, 1944, the sailor sh second sailor transport arrived in Auschwitz. On that day, my father's father, Mayor, who I'm named after, and his mother Gittel, and four brothers and one sister were sent to death by the Russian Marusha Mengele And after becoming a double orphan in one day and then living through the horrors of Auschwitz and then the horrors of the death march my father was able to come to America to raise a family to 
to send them all to the Yeshiva Gedola of Yeshiva of Staten Island, of Rav Moshe's Yeshiva, to be an example of his children, to his children, of how to treat a wife. We watched our father take our mother out twice a week with us to help her. Remember, the famous restaurant on, on 13th Avenue was a dairy restaurant. To Schick's upstairs, a uh, Fleischer restaurant, to help her out. How he took us to the summer and gave us be beautiful summers in the mountains. And he, he, he wanted that we should have the things that he was deprived of. I don't know what kind of bar mitzvah he had, but I remember him making me a weekend bar mitzvah in the Pine View Hotel up in the mountains. A very, very beautiful affair. We invited for a weekend the whole family. And I remember him telling me, I want you to remember this day for the rest of your life. I remember his emotion when I would become engaged and how moved he was. He didn't know if he would ever have a child. And now he has a daughter-in-law. And I remember that we had a normative American childhood with the child excitements of him taking us in the country to an arcade on a Sunday, buying us Hardy Boy books and baseball card packs. This was very special. A man that had every reason to be bitter, to be broken, was able to pull himself up and give a normative, healthy, wholesome chinuch to his children. Of this I want to say thank you, Daddy. It should serve you well in Shemayim. Your neshama should have a great aliyah. And you should be a melitzis yaisher for your family, for all of us, and all of Klal Yisrael. I want to thank the Stern family for making this segment possible. If you would like to sponsor the main Chumashir, 718-916-3100, rmmwsi at aol.com. Also, if you want to join us for Daf Yaimi Masech Des Gitten, Matzi Shabbos, Shir is 1020, we learned two blot. The rest of the week, it's 8.45 p.m. We have a beautiful Zoom family. Just go to zoomdaf.com. You could also pick up the share on toranytime.com, Kalaloshin, YouTube. Thank you for joining us, and have a wonderful Shabbos.